Carroll Township's a very rural area in northern Ohio, right on Lake Erie. Lake Erie's always been very important to Carroll Township and its residents. We use it for drinking water, we treat it, and, it, and it's, it's really our livelihood. In Lake Erie, for what, un, for what unknown reason, suddenly the, the toxin level spiked and that got through uh, the treatment system. It was indicated to me that it is pretty dangerous. Cyanotoxins can cause skin rashes, headaches, nausea, vomiting, stomach problems, nervous system problems, liver damage, to death. We sampled and we had about two and a half times the limit from the World Health Organization. The second sample was approximately 3.5 times. Our plant wasn't set up to handle what was coming in from Lake Erie. One of my biggest worries was actually hurting someone or even worse. So we shut it off right away, shut everything off. We had a very close call that day. The last thing you want to do is produce an unsafe water and allow your people to drink it. What we need is a better way to track and predict the cyanobacteria entries from our source water so that we can make sure that this never happens again. A lot of times we'll find out after the fact that there's a problem with cyanobacteria in the water because the blooms already occurred. Um, we either get results of sick animals or sick people. We need a paradigm shift. We need to go from being constantly reactive to these blooms to having a capability that allows us to become proactive. And the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has been very encouraging of allowing for some high-risk, high-reward projects. And that allowed us to think outside the box, way outside the box. We've been fortunate enough to make use of a sensor on the International Space Station called HICO, which stands for the Hyperspectral Imager for the Coastal Ocean. HICO consists of two instruments. One is a camera, and the second instrument is a spectral photometer which actually gives us the spectrum of light leaving that water. The camera on a cell phone, for example, contains about three bands of data in a red channel, a green channel, and a blue channel. HICO gathers light from the red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet parts of the spectrum. So using this technology, we're able to now detect those water quality parameters such as uh, water clarity, what the phytoplankton concentration is in your water, how much light is being absorbed in your water, as well as what's the distribution of cyanobacteria in those waters, and does that concentration pose a health hazard? So what this means is instead of waiting for someone to report that there's a problem with cyanobacteria bloom, we can monitor these water bodies from space and get information that we can rapidly get out to the water quality managers through uh, a, a, small, a smartphone application that we're, we've developed. So the app allows you to drop a pinpoint, and that pin can be placed in an area where a drinking water treatment plant may have an intake and see what the current water quality conditions were. Each user gets that information near real time so they can make judgment calls on whether they have to respond or take action. Having the HICO on the International Space Station has been the ideal test bed for uh, our research. This is an amazing partnership. The Naval Research Laboratory had HICO on NASA's International Space Station. As HICO acquired a scene, it was transferred to the Naval Research Laboratory. And then the Environmental Protection Agency was able to do the analysis and the validation to send this information out through a prototype mobile application. Yes, this technology will reduce costs and provide near real-time information, but the big goal here is protecting humans. And if we can reduce exposures both to humans and even animals, then we've achieved our goal.